Here are some of the common mistakes most installers make, mostly the new installers. And you should avoid them so that you will not learn the hard way. Mistake number one, chasing cheap brands. You want to use cheap brands at all costs because you want to make profit, number one, or you want to catch a new client. Because if you give the client a quotation that is high, the client may not want to, you know, patronize you. So you go after cheap brands so that your quotation will look cheap. The cost will look lower than other uh, quotations or other quotes. It is very dangerous. It may profit you now, but tomorrow you will pay for it because the system will give issues and the client will not leave you. Most times you end up using your money to buy all the components, either the batteries, the, the inverter, or the solar panels, even the cables. So be very careful. The brands you are recommending or quoting for a client or a customer, don't go for cheap brands. They are dangerous because after installing today, you will not enjoy the money tomorrow. They may pay you now, but they will not, you, you, you end up spending your money in the long run. So the cost is higher in the long run because you must surely pay or you sleep in the cell. You may be arrested. Why? Because the system is failing. Why is it failing? Because you installed brands that are cheap. I am not saying that uh, uh, most brands that their cost is cheap, uh, they are not good. No, that is not what I'm saying. Majority of the brands we have in the market today, you see their prices very, very cheap and you rush after them. They may not be able to last or uh, perform. For a very long time. Some of them, three months, four months, they will start having issues. Either the battery will not be able to supply the actual capacity, uh, or the inverter will start failing, will start beeping. The solar panels, most of the fake solar panels we have, even with high intensity of sun, they will not be generating anything. So be very careful when you are, you know, buying solar components to install for a client. If you need durable components, you need uh, components, uh, batteries that are complete, contact me. I can, I also do supply. I don't only teach. I also do supply. I supply solar components. Number two is copy and paste installations. What is working for Mr. A may not work for Mr. B. So because you install this capacity of, uh, capacity of a solar system for Mr. A does not mean you should copy the same system size and capacity Install it for Mr. B. Why Mr. B's loads may be different, higher than that of Mr. A. Mr. A or Mr. B may be using appliances that Mr. A is not using. So always carry out a proper load audit. You may find out that there is something in Mr. B that Mr. A does not have. Although it is the same capacity of system, but because of the appliances of Mr. B, that system may not serve, and you hear complaints. My neighbor own is last will last for uh, throughout the day, while, uh, throughout the night. Sorry, what is happening to, uh, happening to my own system? It is the same capacity, it is the same size. So why is it shutting down? There is a load there that B is consuming, A is not consuming. So be careful of copy and paste installations. Number three, not explaining limits to your client. Not explaining limits to your client. Because you want to catch that client, you will promise the client that the system will power all his appliances for 24 hours every day, 247. You see somebody quoting a system, a five kilowatt system, telling the client that it will power two air conditions, two uh, ACs, whether it is one horsepower or whatever, it will power throughout the day and throughout the night, at times with even five solar panels. Just because you want to catch that client, it is risky. So uh, not explaining the limits of that system to your client will always put you into trouble. So that is why most times if you are giving a quote, look at the appliances, look at the loads after doing your energy audit, you can give the client about two or three different quotes. This first one will power all your appliances, including the air conditioner and the rest. This second one, no AC, no uh, water pump, no water heater, but it will power your TV, your maybe your small fridge or whatever. 
This one, no refrigerator, just for lights and TV and charging of phones. Give the client so that the client will choose himself. At the end of the day, he will know that I am the one who chooses a client. The installer explained everything to me. The limit. Tell the client, this system can only power these appliances. If you are designing the system to power some appliances during the day and power the, the less energy consuming appliances at night, in, explain all these things to the client. If at night this system will last for only four hours, let him know. If it will last for six hours, let the client know. Instead of deceiving that person that this thing will run for 24 hours, after installing that system, you will not have any rest. You will not sleep. Because so long as that system is shutting down, the client will not allow you to sleep. It is money. Solar is expensive. It is millions. So you have to do things the right way. You sit with your client. Explain the basic terms. Even DOD, you have to let the client know. This is lead acid. Don't discharge it. You cannot discharge it more than 50%. That is the recommended depth of discharge. This one is lithium battery. The recommended depth of this charge is 80%. It's 90%. This is the usable capacity. This is what you can take from this battery. This is what this inverter can power. Let the client know all these details. After everything, if there's any problem or any challenge, you will know that you played your own part. Again, solar components, they are not 100% efficient. Anything can happen. But even if the system fails, it may just be a, a minor issue that you just rush and fix. But if you tell the client that this system will power your AC, will power your water heater, and at night the client heats that system with all those appliances and the system collapses, you may end up replacing all those components. Then the last one, no continuous learning. You have to upgrade yourself. Solar components are changing every day. Remember before we were just tied to PWM charge controllers. Today we have uh, MPPT solar charge controllers. We were using, uh, what's it called, non-hybrid inverters. Today we have hybrid inverters. We have ESS, energy storage systems. We have CNI today. They are upgrading. They are, you need to upgrade yourself. We have microgrid, mini grids. You have to learn so that you can upgrade. If you don't upgrade yourself, you will not be able to catch up with the latest technology. You become outdated in the field. You don't know what is happening, the, the latest trend in the industry. So for you to stay updated, you need to uh, learn continuously. You need to improve. You need to update and upgrade your, your credentials. Upgrade yourself in terms of your knowledge, in terms of... Uh, uh, you know, the skills, the technical skills. You have to learn more so that you'll be well grounded in the field. You also need to know how to properly size a solar power system. Without you knowing how to size a, a solar power system, even, you know, given a quote, will be very difficult because you don't know the components to use. You don't know if you are going to use a 10 mm cable, a 6 mm cable, or even 16 mm cable. How can you know the size of cable? From your solar panels to your inverter, from your inverter to your battery, how will you know the size of the cable to use when you don't know how to properly size a solar power system? So you need to update and upgrade yourself in terms of learning, learning how to do these things, how to size the various components of a solar power system. It is very, very important. In fact, this is the bedrock. This is the foundation. If you want to succeed in this solar business, you need to know how to properly size a solar power system. If you know how to properly size a solar power system, how the inverter functions, how the charge controller functions, how the battery functions, even in terms of troubleshooting, you will not find it difficult to troubleshoot a system because theoretically you already know how these things work. So if this one is not working where you know what is already uh, the problem and you also know how to, to, to make use of digital multimeter, there are some that are very expensive, some are not too expensive. You need a digital multimeter to at least test voltage before you even go into buying a clamp meter to know if there's current from your solar panel to either your charge controller or hybrid inverter to know the current that is, you know, leaving, uh, that the inverter is pulling from the battery 
All these things will help you during troubleshooting. So you also need some basic tools for proper solar installation. Thank you for watching. Once again, if you need solar components, whether it is battery, inverter, whatever you need, let me know in the comment section. I also supply. I don't only teach. I also supply. Thank you very much for watching and see you in my next video. Compliments of the season.